All right, it's starting to get warmer <laughs> and it's uh, starting to fill in with the leaves, uh, deciduous leaves. So um, yeah, some things have already flowered and gone. One thing that hasn't come out yet is um, Solomon seal and false Solomon seal. The leaves have come out, but they haven't flowered. And you might know how to tell the difference, but I can't tell the difference if I don't see where the flowers are. I'll show you. So this guy is either a false Solomon seal or Solomon seal. They're actually in the same habitat. Zigzag pattern, lancite leaves. But if it actually has the flowers at the edge, at the tip, and the berries later on, that's false Solomon seal. If it has the flowers underneath, hanging underneath, and the berries later on, that's Solomon seal. So because it hasn't flowered yet, or there's no berries, I can't tell the difference. So yeah, if you know a way to tell the difference without that, just write that down below. I would like to know that because I've only gone to a certain level of education on, on Solomon seal, false Solomon seal. That's what I'm saying. Beautiful forest though. It's a new one for me. Never been here before. There's a road obviously right beside me. Um, but this is, oh, I forgot. It's part of the Quarthal Land Trust. Just opened up this trail a few years ago. It's near um, Gans Narrows. I am on the hunt though. I got two more I want to show before I finish the spring series and do other things. But uh, yeah, I want to show um, Wild Ginger. And I know where that is, not on this trail, but I do know a trail where that is. So I'll get to, the, to that one. And Dutchman Breaches. And I don't, I don't know why I haven't seen it. It's a common flower this time of year. I have no idea where I am. This woodlot though. Okay, I found false Solomon seal. Uh, you know how I said that I, I couldn't tell because uh, the flowers weren't coming out from the tip for false Solomon seal and from the bottom for, for Solomon seal? Found one. Okay, so false Solomon seal. It'd be Solomon seal if they're on the bottom and hanging. Cool. Awesome. And it's about the downpour. <laughs> All right. Okay, we got some wild ginger. So heart sheep, heart shaped leaf. Okay, no serrations. Fuzzy stem fuzzy bottom of the leaf. That's to keep it warm. If there's a frost. And a flower at the bottom. Doesn't look like much. Dull red. Auburn. Low to the ground. And it smells like ginger. Tastes like ginger. But it doesn't belong to the ginger family. True story. Lots of it here. Wow. This part of the forest is absolutely covered in mayapple. It is absolutely everywhere. <laughs> the entire forest is covered in it, carpeted in it. Yeah, cool. It's supposed to be a, it was part of an active farm. And then it was donated, I think, to Parks Canada and to the Course of Land Trust. Cool. Look at all the mayapple. Holy jumping. Okay, I was showing you um, wild strawberry, I think, on episode or, or series four. Uh, and it didn't have the flower yet. That was just last week. Oh, Angel, get out. Hey, 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 why are you just stepped on my. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's wild strawberry, but it's now flowered. I got one more spring wildflower to find. Well, there's lots more to find, but I had a list. And it's, uh, once again, it's, uh, uh, oh, the bugs are out. Ooh. It's, um, 
I forgot. What is it? What is it? Uh, um, Dustman's Breaches. So I'm at this new trail I haven't been to before along Stony Lake. Early morning. But yeah, <laughs> leaves are coming in, bugs are coming out. I better find this plant. Friends are coming up. Yeah. Times are changing in the forest. It's a nice trail though. So I'm going up a hill, and there's something up the top. I've never been here before, and it's just on the road from where I live. <laughs> I guess it took a stay-at-home order because of COVID to make me find these places. I still haven't found my plant, though. This is not a habitat for it, so but it's a nice spot. Oh, cool. Okay, still haven't found my Dutchman's breeches. Um, I don't think it's in this habitat. I'm gonna have to go somewhere else, but uh, I found something actually even more special. I've never seen this before. Uh, fringe poly, oh, I can't pronounce it. Oh my Lord. Fringe polygala. Uh, I actually know it as gay wing. Um, I think that's a slang term, but this is so cool. All right, so the leaves are whirled. Actually, they're not whirled. They appear to be whirled around. Um, and there's the orchid-like flower. Beautiful little flower. And um, yeah, it's fantastic. The, uh, some people say this looks like wintergreen, they could get confused, because you can eat the wintergreen um, leaves. I'm not sure if you can eat that, but you wouldn't want to anyway. It's a special flowers, it's not that common. That's beautiful. Yeah, so if I don't find my, uh, my um, see, I've already forgotten about it. <laughs> my Dutch and Precious. I'll show a picture of it. Uh, it is a really cool uh, flower and plant. Uh, only the bumblebee that I know uh, can actually pollinate it because it looks like Dutchman's breeches, like like underwear. And the bumblebee has the longest tongue, or a long enough tongue, to go up inside to pollinate it. Maybe that's why it's not here. There's no bumblebees. Um, and yeah, it, it looks like a breeches hanging on the line to, to dry, and uh, it's got little yellow ends to it as well, almost like it's peed its pants. <laughs> Uh, in the old days, they used to use it for uh, med medicinal purposes for lesions or actually syphilis. Who knew? All right, are you all right? Did you go for a swim? Oh yes, Gavin, it was gorgeous. <laughs> When's lunch, Gavin? Did you bring lunch? I hope you brought lunch. Hear that? Well, red winged blackbird, but in the background, I don't know if you can hear it. I'll up the, the volume, the uh, audio. This American toad, trust roll herbivore. <laughs> terrestrial uh, herb tile, sorry, and um, but it uh, has its eggs in, along the edge of the water. Cool. American toad calling in a mate. They're having sex. Let sneak by. <laughs> cool. Okay, one more plant. It's growing all over the place. It's not a wildflower, spring wildflower, uh, but it's a really cool plant. So I'll have, have a look at horsetail. It's 
So this is the young shoots of the horsetail. In the summertime, it will actually um, grow up quite big, really um, dark green with sections along it. And um, if you break it open, if you break this open too, but if you break it open, it's got kind of got like an aloe substance to it. And if you ever get stuck in the bush and have to wash your hair, it makes a really good shampoo. And they call it horse's tail because it looks like a horse's tail. And horse tail must have its feet wet, so it grows along uh, streams and wet areas. So perfect habitat for you right now. Oh, someone's called. So there's Jack in the pulpit. I, I've already shown that one in one of the other series, but it didn't have leaves yet. So there's Jack in the pulpit with its three leaves. Cool plant. Well, I thought I'd try another trail on the way back for the elusive <laughs> Dutchman's Breaches. It's not elusive, it's a very common plant. And I thought I saw it in this park before and I can't find it. Cool ravines, long streams. Yeah, I don't know. Oh well, I've seen a lot of other things. The bugs are getting bad anyway. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that series of spring wildflowers. Uh, I started the um, last week in April, I believe, and now it's the third week in May. Yeah, and everything's changing. Like, the trilliums are still out, but all the other early ones we saw in the first series, they're just dying off. Uh, well, the flower's dying off, anyway. So, very short period of time for these flowers to make a living out here. That's beanberry, so I thought I saw it, but it, that's beanberry. Shoot. Oh, well. <laughs> you can tell I've become obsessed with finding this plant. And I'll be doing more, uh, not wildflowers uh, or spring wildflowers obviously, but other species. Um, yeah, this is what I teach, this is what I worked in for many years too. Uh, past forest technician, I worked in fish and wildlife, um, and then outdoor ed. And I've been teaching ecosystem skills. Whoa, the mosquitoes are getting my ecosystem skills at, uh, at a college part-time for, I think it's my 32nd year right now. So this is what I do. I mean, yeah, I'm a happy camper. I go canoeing, go camping, and everybody knows my guidebooks. Well, not everybody. I mean, if you're on my channel, you know my guidebooks. But um, not a lot of people know that I've been teaching tree ID, plant ID, bird ID, fish ID for a long time. Oh, okay. Mosquitoes are getting bad. I'm out of here. So during the Civil War, a nationalist named John Muir, um, he became a draft dodger. He didn't believe in war. He believed in the freedom of slaves, but not war. Uh, so he escaped to Canada, from the United States, and he was running through the wo woods north of Lake Huron, and he tripped and he tripped and fell on a pack of orchids, white orchids, I believe. It didn't really matter what they were, but what he wrote in his journal was really significant. He said, "Would not the world suffer from the banishment of a single wheat?" And what he meant by there, in fact, actually, in the dictionary, he defined the term preservation by that idea that every single thing in nature should be equal rights to humans. We should not be anthropocentric. We're not top of the pyramid. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I thought that would be a fitting quote to end this wildflower chat. Come on, Angel. <laughs>